Hi, my name's Susan and I teach textile design with South Lanarkshire Leisure and Culture and today we're going to do some fabric weaving. Okay, I'm just using this um, bias, bias tape folder. You just put the edge of the fabric in, get a pair of scissors through the slot and feed it through until you see the edge coming out. And it automatically folds strips of fabric into approximately an inch. And just press it. And these wee tools come in, I think, four sizes. This is the largest one. Um, probably about four quid or something each. So the reason for using this is you get a uniform strip. It saves you burning your fingers trying to fold in exactly the same width either side all the time, so it saves a whole lot of work. So to get an inch of uh, fabric strip, I cut just under an inch and a half of the fabric and that will be able to be fed in and folded to this size. To start with, I'm using a piece of foam, it's, just, it's actually just two small bits of foam, but it could be cork, a, a cork pin board or a piece of carpet, something that will hold the pins in place. And then I'm going to put a piece of calico down and just that will be the backing, just tape that to the table. To do the fabric weave, you're going to have your pile of fabric strips, two different colours, and we're going to do two, then two of the other colour. So I'm just going to place them exactly next to each other, and then it'll be too white. Sometimes a good idea if you want to try a pattern out to try it with paper first. Um, you can plot the pattern on graph paper and then cut strips of paper out and do the, the weave just to see how easy or difficult it is. This one I'm going to do a, a dog tooth check um, but there's a stack of patterns that you can even have a look at online or make your own ones up. So once you've covered the board, pin them down just to hold them in place. Right at the top. If you can angle your pins quite flat, because we're going to stick a piece of tape over the top so they don't start moving about. The reason we don't sew this is so that we can do the top part of the weave if we need to go over anything. It's much easier to take the pins out than to try and weave really tightly at the top. And just take a bit of masking tape and take some of the stickiness off it. Stick it in my trousers. It just means it doesn't pull everything in bits so you're pulling off. 
and that's ready to go. I've got these um, little needle things that makes it easier to weave with. This is just out of plastic milk carton cut to a point with a slot in the bottom that you can put your fabric through. You can buy a particular needle, it's called a wefty needle online, but you can make your own just as easy out of cardboard or plastic. And it's a matter of just going over and under for the first row. If you want, you can just flip your warp fa fabric up, that's easier. just so it doesn't move about and trim the end. You want a little, maybe about an inch or just under at either end and we'll pin that to the fabric then we're carrying it over to the machine it makes it a lot easier. It's going to be Two navy and then two white, the same as the warp. And this one's going to be under and over. So just make sure when you're getting your weftry uh, fabric and it's butted right up to the, the last piece so you're not seeing any of the calico underneath. I'm going to start sewing this um, with quite a large stitch because all it is getting secured are the top warp threads. So I've selected the stitch length and put it probably nearly at the longest stitch and needle down the back stitch to start with and them off. I'm trying to catch the top waist strap
Can you just remove the masking tape? And I've cut a piece of batting about the size of the whole piece of fabric. And I'm going to pin that on and then we'll quilt squares in it. stretch the piece right evenly to the edges. If you have a walking suit for the machine, it might be worth changing it onto a walking suit, but we don't have one here, so we're just going to take it easy. And I'm choosing each square roughly about three by four. Four by four, let's see how it looks. I'm going to start from the middle again just to keep it all quite even. And I'm going to position my needle. It's still at zero, which means it's at the left hand side. So it's going to go down this strap here and just try and stitch there. Okay. Now rather than just turn it around and go back up the way, I'm just going to keep doing this, the stitching the same direction all the time and it stops you getting any puckers in the, the batting in the front. So this time, I'm going to position my needle into the centre. single strap if you wanted and across every strap we're just going to do it in quite large squares. I'm just going to use the rotary cutter to cut the excess off Okay, and that's the finished piece for this week and we'll make a pattern next week and use this for a bag or something. Um, I've got other examples that 
using two colours, got little chevrons, which is reasonably straightforward. That would be something that you could find a pattern for online. And if you want to try more complicated and using the three colours, this one's called a tumbling block and it has a kind of three dimensional effect. And that's it.